For some students, going to school means unwelcome questions. Questions about their identity, their sexuality, and the way that they act. That can force some people to avoid school, or even drop out. Radioactive's Lucas G. found that in Seattle, there's a better alternative. For Mimi, one of the worst parts of school was her peers' comments about her appearance. I really stuck out like a sore thumb, definitely as being someone, you know, queer, very alternative, very, you know, neon blue hair and dark makeup and platform docs. For me, it was more the students' invasive questions about me being transgender. In middle school, people would always ask me why I was trans or what's in my pants or if I'm going to get surgery. It got really tiring. Like, that's none of your business, sorry. And even though Mimi and I went to different schools, we both felt like we weren't accepted. Mimi also had difficulties with the teacher and staff. She was struggling with her mental health and had self-harm scars on her arm. Eventually, the school counselor noticed, but not in a good way. The guidance counselor comes up to me in the hallway and is like, cover your sleeves because you can't have that here or else you just have to go home. And I was like, okay, I'll, I'll leave. And I didn't go for the rest of the school year. I thought I was never going to succeed in high school or even like finish my freshman year. My issues were mostly with the other students. My friends thought it was funny to insult me and call me slurs. So eventually I decided to drop out of the eighth grade and I began online classes. After being out of school for a while, both Mimi and I ended up attending Nova High School, an alternative school, and things were completely different there. And it was just like this like, hell yeah moment of like, oh, this is my saving grace. Oh my God, this is freaking destiny. Like this is the perfect chance to just start over. Nova is dedicated to discussing mental health and trauma in their students. Nova has no grades as a way to relieve stress. We mostly do open-ended projects so students can decide what they want to do as opposed to textbooks or worksheets. Nova has much smaller class sizes and we call our teachers by their first names. This leads to some students and teachers feeling more connected. Seeing them as people you trust and can confide in and not just like, oh, Mr. Robinson who teaches my AP lit class, oh my god, he's so scary, but you know Inova, like, oh yeah, that's my teacher, Mike, he's really awesome. So one of the main reasons students, including myself, decide to go to Nova is because of how welcoming they are to LGBT students. There's, like, committees and clubs and, like, um, gender tea, I believe it's called, Mm -hmm. um, talking about gender and, like, having tea and, like, (laughs) but just normalizing it and... It being like a commonplace thing and kids not feeling like they're weird or that they're like an exception to a norm because being straight isn't the norm. I think it would be great if other schools had more things like this. That way it wouldn't fall on the shoulders of LGBT kids to educate their peers. And because of Nova, Mimi was able to graduate high school and I'm about to start my second year. However, not everyone can attend an alternative school, so Mimi wishes the staff at other schools would check in on their students more. There's always signs that someone is struggling or suffering or needs, you know, help or just wants someone to talk to. Like, if you know to look for it, then you'll see it. I wish that students were really taught to be kind and accepting to one another, even if there's things they don't understand. Everyone deserves to feel respected. For Radioactive, this is Lucas G. Sometimes politics drive family and friends apart, but that wasn't the case for a radioactive Marianne Mohammed and her mom, Mulki. Marianne found herself becoming close to her mom through conversations about politics. That started when the first Somali-American woman was elected to Congress in 2018. Sometimes I just don't get my mom. I mean, her music, for example. The videos for these songs often show a woman in front of the ocean as her hair waves in the wind declaring her love for a man. 
but on my playlist you'd find this I just want to feel something I just want to feel I just want to feel something I just want to I like to listen to music from alternative to hip hop That isn't the only difference There's also a language barrier that separates us I don't speak Somali whereas my mom can speak it fluently I felt a lot of shame that I can't speak my native language to my own mom Sometimes my mom has also compared me to other Somali girls, asking me why I couldn't wake up at 6 in the morning to cook breakfast. That was a source of tension between us. But then this happened. I stand here before you tonight as your congresswoman elect with many firsts behind my name. Elhan Omar becomes the first Somali American woman elected to Congress in 2018. I could remember the tears that welled up in my eyes as I read the news for the first time. It took my mom a whole two weeks to get used to the fact that someone like her was elected to Congress. She gave us a lot of hope. She showed us we can be anything we wanted. My mom and I found a new connection through Umar. My mom was born and raised in Somalia, whereas I was born in the U.S. Somehow, we found different parts of ourselves to connect to Umar. In Congresswoman Umar, I saw a woman raising her voice to bring change. For my mom... She believed that education was not meant for her, but it was only meant for certain people. Because we have like all the people, they have like this mindset, like they think like a woman cannot do nothing. I believe, I think we can do a lot of things. We can change in Somali government, how they rule. I think women can do more. Seeing Amr succeed changed her mindset. Now she's pursuing a degree in early childhood education. Slowly, my mom and I started talking about politics. I would walk into the kitchen while my mom cooked and bring up issues like human rights. Our conversation gradually got more personal. My mom shared more of her experience from the refugee camp Kakumo. It turned out to be the same refugee camp that Umar lived in before migrating to the U.S. I remember it was so horrible when the war happened. We didn't have nothing to eat. My mom went to look for food. So my, uh, my oldest brother, he was so smart, and then he started to look for some food, and then he couldn't find nothing. And then he, he said, what about if I mix water with salt? I don't know how he came up with that, that idea. And then he said, come, sisters, drink. This will make you full until mom come home and, uh, for, with the food. I used to just feel sad listening to my mom's refugee stories, but now I'm glad to have a better understanding of who she is. It's surprising that politics was the thing that brought my mom and I closer. We're able to be more of ourselves, showcasing our American and Somali sides. As for her music, I still cringe. For Radioactive, this is Marianne Mohammed's 